So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I just got some uh, brain specimens out that I'm going to use to demonstrate the structures to you guys. But before I do that, I have some lecture notes and things that I want to talk to you about. So what we do in here is when we're handling the brain, we wear gloves. Very important, right? The stuff that the, the, the brains are packed in, the preserving agent, is called Kero-Safe, <laughs> meaning it's safe. But I wouldn't drink it, I wouldn't lick it, I wouldn't put it on my face, right? So when you're done handling the brains and you're going to do something else, take off your gloves and throw them away. I have a whole cabinet full of gloves. I have three boxes full of gloves down here. They're not that expensive. I can afford to buy you more gloves. So don't reuse your gloves. Just get a new set. If you need to write some stuff, write, or go use the bathroom, or sneeze, or blow your nose, or anything, take off your gloves, right? And feel free to go wash your hands. It's fine, all right? Um, I would, um, under the do as I say, not as I do, you really shouldn't have food or drink in here for when we're doing this kind of stuff. Because I would want some Kerosafe to like splash on my bagel and then eat it. That wouldn't be good, right? So just for safety reasons, we're going to uh, be good about that. But you might see me with the volunteers or something like that. Um, other safety things. So um, if you get the Kerosafe on you, it's fine. It's safe. Right? I would go wash your hands or wash the area of your arm or whatever it's on, and that's fine. If you are having, if you feel like the fumes are bad or you're having breathing, I do have masks. If you want to wear a mask, I have masks available that you can wear if you feel more comfortable when you're working with them. Um, you'll kind of get used to it, it shouldn't be too, too bad. Um, and we have the ventilation on um, heavy in here. Uh, when you're done with and ready to go take the lab practical, we ask that you go put your brains back in the appropriate tubs. So today we're doing all whole brains, except there's one tub that's marked about cerebellums. Um, and then there's one that's marked it's like cerebellum pieces. You'll understand that in a minute. Um, so just put them back in the right containers. And then if you would rinse out your tray in that sink, just with cold water, rinse all the little bits and pieces and care safe out of it. And then just set it over here. You can either stack them up alternating like that, or you can just set it up here like that. It's fine, so they can dry. All right. I think that's all safety lab type stuff. All right. So real quick before we get into today's stuff, and actually, let me have you guys do this while I'm talking. So. Um, I made some revisions to the, um, the sheet that was online, uh, some corrections, and so I printed everybody a copy. Um, and so, um, on, back up again. Let me introduce your lab TAs. <laughs> so this is Madeline, and this is Vanessa, and uh, their TA hours are posted on top of the Moodle site. Um, Madeline is going to move her hours to Thursday. I haven't updated that yet, but I will probably tomorrow from 6.30 to 9.30, so they'll be available Tuesday and Thursday evenings and then on Sundays. Um, and so when they're here, they'll either be, they'll probably be over in the psych suite, um, but they can come over here if you want to go through some sheet brain things with them, that would be fine. Or if you want more writing lab reports, you have questions about that or how to run the lab or anything like that. Um, the code to get in this room is 341 enter. You guys can come in here and look at the sheet brains. I'll trust you guys to come in until we have a problem, and then we'll change the code, and you all won't be able to come in. But I'm sure we won't have a problem, because you guys look like a bunch of uh, good respectful people. So. Um, just stay out of the research areas, and make sure you clean up after yourself. I don't want to come in in the morning and see like sheet brain trays and parts of sheet brains like that all night, because they go bad. It's just not fun for anyone. So we won't, hopefully we won't have no problems with that. Thank you. Can you pass this out to everybody? Um, after we're done, I also, just since I was printing stuff for you guys, I went ahead and proofread and printed weeks two and three. So if you want to come up here and grab one of those sheets later, uh, when you're doing your work, you're happy, they're up here available for you. Also on uh, both of those computers over there, there's a folder that says Sheet Brain Resources that has Pretty much everything that's on Moodle 
um, like the example sheets and the list of structures. I'll put this video over on those computers. So if you come in and you're like, oh, I really want to hear how he described how to identify the frontal gyri again, you can go look that up on the video and listen to it. Okay, so I'll put, give me every resource possible to be successful. Okay, and I hope all y'all will guess it. Um, it's going to be really big, so I'll, I'll see if I can, if I can do that. I'll see if I can do that. Um, that might be a possibility. All right. Don't need this yet. What's that? Back to this. So before you get going, I want to run through real quick a little bit of terminology that I'll be using because so that you guys know. And if I say something and you don't understand it, Raise your hand, stop me, and let me get clarified because this is your chance to learn this material. The structure is we're going to go through how to identify and locate all the structures. Then you guys are going to practice in pairs, rehearsing, quizzing each other, identifying all the structures. And when you feel good about knowing the structures, then you'll go into our classroom, 233, where we'll have the lab practical set up, and you'll take the lab practical, so you'll go around to each station. You have as much time as you want at each station, but if you're stuck at one, just sort of be respectful. If other people need to get there, maybe take a break and come back to that one in a few minutes if you're, if you're stuck on one, okay? Um, when you're done uh, taking the lab practical, this is really important. Some students don't like it, but I think it's really important. You need to come over to my office and let me grade it in front of you so we can go through what you missed because this is your opportunity to, to know, have immediate feedback, okay, I didn't get the ventral structures good enough. I gotta learn that for next week. Because these are cumulative, so everything we learned this week will be on next week's practical plus the stuff we're gonna learn next week. So it adds up as we go. So I, I know students feel awkward and you hate like sitting there while I grade your thing, but I, you have to have that feedback so that you immediately know what it is you can work on, right? I think that's real important. Um, and so just, if someone's in my office being graded, because you all just hang out and come in one at a time, and we'll take care of that, and then you're free to go, okay? And you can leave your books and everything in here, that's fine, while we're doing all this. All right. Some terms. And I'll go kind of quick through this, because it's really boring, and it's just information. And this uh, is PowerPoint's on the Moodle site. But we have different words we use to describe the orientation of the brain or just anatomy in general. And so we have uh, dorsal, which means towards the top or back, and ventral, which means to the bottom or to the stomach. And that's because most animals, like if I do a dog here, right, that's my rough thing of a dog. Right, I'm Rottweiler, so they don't have tails. All right, so. Uh, if there's a dog, and this is its brain, right? This is uh, dorsal, this is ventral, and in the spine, this is dorsal, and this is ventral. Somewhere along the line, we turned and stood upright, and so now, in a human brain, right, this is dorsal, this is ventral, but in the spinal cord, that is dorsal, and this is ventral because there's a 90 degree bend here between those two structures, right? So it's just kind of, that's why I say towards the stomach or back, right? Again, talking about anterior and posterior, <laughs> we're talking like that. Here we tend to talk about anterior and posterior kind of like that. But we don't do too much in the spinal cord, so that shouldn't really matter too much. Lateral means away from the midline, so your ears are lateral, okay? Your nose is medial on the midline. Ipsilateral means on the same side of the brain, so we're going to see that the brains are kind of mirror images of each other. So here's my human brain. And if you look at it, there's really two halves, right? So we have a midline, we have uh, that's medial, we have lateral, insulateral is on one side, contralateral means we're going from one side to the other side. In 
um, the central and peripheral nervous system, we treat the pathways, the neural, the neural pathways differently. In the peripheral nervous system, we call them nerves. So a group of axons traveling together that belong together is a nerve. In, um, and the cell bodies for that are called ganglion. Yes? Can you, so contralateral is something that's on both sides, or it goes from one side? From one to side the to the other, so or crosses sides, okay. right? Okay. Um, so for instance, my movement of my right hand is controlled by my left motor cortex. Yeah. So we say that's contralateral, not okay. extralateral. In the peripheral nervous system, we use the term nerve for a group of, of axons traveling together, and those axon cell bodies are grouped together in what we call a ganglion. In the central nervous system, a group of neuron of cell bodies that belong together are called a nucleus or nuclei. So nucleus is the same thing as a ganglion, there's ones in the central nervous system and ones in the peripheral nervous system. In, I should have had that up here, but I don't have it up here. But I can just write it right here and then it's like it's up there, right? So a tract is a central nervous system pathway. So a pathway in the peripheral nervous system is a nerve, that same group. So when we talk about the optic nerve, and I'll show you today, the optic nerve comes in and once it gets to the central nervous system, we call it the optic tract because it's now in the CMS, not the PMS. Two things you'll get real familiar with. Gyri are the sort of smooth bubble areas on the brain. And sulci are the folds or grooves, or they actually just kind of look like lines, but they're um, invaginations or grooves in the brain that define the gyri. So gyrus is singular, gyri is plural, sulcus is singular, sulci are plural. Um, I will use Sometimes the terms uh, sul sulcus and fissure uh, sort of analogous to one another. Uh, fissures tend to be more major grooves or divisions. Sulci tend to be sort of minor ones. But don't get hung up on like that, okay? On your lab practical, I'll give you a sheet to fill in. And by each um, answer, if it's a gyrus, I'll put gyrus in parentheses. If it's a sulcus or fissure, I'll put sulci or fissure uh, in parentheses, right? And once we get to things like ventricles, I'll put, I'll put CSF in parentheses so you know it's in a ventricle. Uh, so I'm not trying to trick you, right? I'm, we're trying to give you all the information so you can demonstrate that you know this anatomy, okay? All right. Um, all right, we already talked about anterior posterior. Horizontal uh, sections, we know about horizontal sections, we're talking about a plane cut through the brain that's parallel to the floor. And that's what a horizontal section looks like. A sagittal or mid-sagittal section, we'll do those next week. We'll cut the brains in exactly in half and look at the mid-sagittal structure. So today we're just doing surface areas. Week two, we'll do mid-sagittal areas. Week three, we'll do coronal cuts. And coronal cuts are cuts that are like straight down through the head like this. So it's like you're looking straight on uh, the face, and that's what those look like, okay? All right, we're ready to do that. Coronal, straight down through the brain. They look like this. That, sagittal, through the middle part of the brain. They look like that. Parasagittal, or not on the midline. We won't really do parasagittal. Horizontal, we'll do the third week. Their cuts parallel to the floor, and they look like that. Okay? Awesome. All right. So, um, all vertebrates share, as we talked about in class on Tuesday, the same basic structures of the hind brain, mid brain, forebrain, right? But they vary in different proportions. Okay? Um, the hind brain and, uh, it consists of the brain stem and cerebellum does basic life-sustaining tasks in the cerebellums involved in coordinating sensory and motor responses and also some learning. The midbrain, we won't get to today because those are mostly internal structures, um, are interested in motivational state and sensory filtering. And then the cortex, the forebrain, can be 
you break it down into different parts, like the limbic system, which is involved with emotional states. Uh, we don't really see any of that today. The cerebral hemispheres and cortex, this is where we have sort of complex thought processes, sensory processes, uh, vision, hearing, touch, motor systems, decision making, memory, all of that stuff. Okay? Um, we talked about this in class that the main difference between the rat and the human brain is that the rat's forebrain is only 44% of its brain weight. The human forebrain is 85% of its brain weight, much, much bigger proportion. Right? Um, why are we using sheep brains in here? Does anyone have any idea? Are they more similar to human brains? They are. They're pretty similar to human brains, and they're cost effective. They're the most cost effective animal model that's similar to human brains. A rat brain, I don't have a rat brain up here, but a rat brain has a very smooth cortex. It doesn't have a lot of cortex. Why is the cortex uh, wrinkled in the human brain and smooth in these brains? What would be the, the difference? More surface area, which means more neurons, more processing power, better decision making, better sensory, all of that stuff, right? So if I want to increase the amount of neurons inside our skull, and our skull is limited in the size we can make it, stuff starts folding in and creating more surface area for processing power. Right? So sheep have very similar gyri um, lobes in some ways. Um, the major um, difference is the forebrain, right? Um, and so the forebrain gets bigger. The main thing that changes in the forebrain across species, and we'll see it in the sheep versus human, is the frontal lobe, right? So the frontal lobes is what gets bigger in all these brains and actually pushes the rest of the brain back. So much so that in the sheep, it's kind of like a dog brain. Um, only about one-third of the brain is frontal lobe. But in the human, half. Of the, of the brain, the frontal lobe, right? So the line, the sulcus, that separates the frontal lobes from the rest of the brain is called the central sulcus in the human because it's centrally located in the middle of the brain, halfway back. In the sheep, because it's way up here in the front third of the brain, it's not called central, that wouldn't make any sense. It's actually called the cruciate fissure. I'll show you that in just a second. All right. Um, as I mentioned, everything's on Moodle. There's a sheep brain dissection guide. That's actually at the top of the Moodle page near where the syllabus is. And again, all those resources are also on those computers over there um, that you can look at. There's some atlases. There's lots of different structures and things you can do. Um, if you want to take uh, pictures of your brains in here, that's fine. Um, if, you, if you want to do that, but it's probably I think using pictures is sort of more difficult. That's not how you're going to take a lot of practical. I would, you know, if you want to reverse things, like come in here and actually look at some brains. One of the things that I will point out about the brains is that every brain is different and unique. All of your brains are different and unique. All these sheep's brains are different and unique, believe it or not. And so if you take pictures of your brain in lab and that's what you study all week, well, next week you might be looking at a brain that's slightly, that looks slightly different. All the parts are there, but it's not, if you memorize a picture, it's not going to look like that picture when you look at it a different brain. Does that make sense? All right. So, do not try to memorize locations. <laughs> because if you try and memorize the way it looks, what you're looking at in here, I guarantee, is not what's going to be in there because I've already set that up in there. Right? So you're not looking at the same specimen. Right? The way to do this, right, the way to do this, is for each structure to learn the landmarks and be able to say why you know that's a cruciate fissure, right? If you point at something, if you and your partner are rehearsing things and you quiz each other and say, what is this? And they say cruciate fissure, and you say why, even if they're right. I need to tell you because I'm orientating to the top part of the brain 
I know I'm in the anterior part, and it's a sulcus that runs perpendicular to the longitudinal fissure, and the only one that does that is the cruciate fissure. There's a logic to this. We orientate, I have that on here, right? And you say why, right? Orientate and then landmarks, okay? The first thing you should do when you go into the lab practical and you walk up to a station is orientate and say, am I looking, today you're going to look at it and say, am I looking at the top or the bottom of the brain? Because there's different structures on the dorsal side and different structures on the ventral side. And if you get that confused, there's no way you can get that right. So you orientate, what am I looking at? Am I looking at the front or the back, the anterior, the posterior, the brain? Is it a gyrus, a sulcus? Um, another type of structure, right? um, and then that will be the cues in order for you to understand what it is. Good? All right, so when I'm done showing you guys um, the structures, I'm going to go set up the lab practical so it'll be ready whenever someone's ready to go take it. Um, Madeline and um, Vanessa are going to be in here and they'll rotate around, just raise your hand or, or ask them to come help you. If you ask them and say, what is this structure? I told them to ask you, well, what, what do you think it is and why? Right? And they'll correct you if you're wrong, but you have to go through that process. You can't just go, is this the whatever? Right? It's real important. That's the way to do it.